Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller. So the budget debate ended yesterday with the closing presentation by the finance minister. The finance minister opens the budget debate. The opposition spokesman on finance responds. The opposition leader and the prime minister give their presentations. And as I said, it's closed by the finance minister. And in his presentation yesterday, the finance minister took issue with a number of the statements that had been made in the presentation, in the budget debate by members of the opposition. Let's listen to one comment by the finance minister. It's general knowledge, I should ask, Madam Speaker. Isn't it general knowledge in Jamaica that the compassionate grant was paid out to closely 400,000 Jamaicans? Yes. Didn't everyone see the lines on television and on social media? Wasn't I criticized? Yes. We reported here in the parliament. Yes. Yet the opposition spokesman used figures that in an obvious error stated the compassionate grant at $150 million and not $4 billion. Now again, the original error was with the IDB who published the report. But I contend, or I ask you whether you think he should have picked that up. Okay, so we have with us now the opposition spokesman on finance, Julian Robinson. Mr. Robinson, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening to you, Diana, and good evening to your viewers. Now, the opposition had a press conference today to address some of the issues coming out of the budget debate. I, I listened to all of it. And what I got from it was the opposition saying, we had hoped the finance minister would have spoke more to issues of crime, issues of, of COVID and how we're going to deal with that, issues of food security, issues of small uh, business operators and the difficulties they're having. But there was a kind of skirting around the concerns raised by the finance minister saying that the opposition was operating on the basis of faulty figures. Do you accept that your figures were faulty? Not at all. In fact, there was no skirting. We dealt with it. So let's take the IDB data. The data from came from a report done by the IDB. The same data is also obtained in a report done by the IMF. The purpose of that data was to look at the comparison of Jamaica to other countries in the region in terms of the percentage of GDP we have spent in responding to COVID. And even if you add the data that the finance minister says should be included, our response is still way down at the bottom of the pack. On average, Caribbean countries have spent close to 5% of GDP responding to COVID. Jamaica's figures by the IDB and the IMF were close to 1.3%. The finance minister says there were omissions. If you include those omissions, you might get it to 2, 2.5%. It is still way below everybody else in the region. The point we have made from the beginning by using those comparisons is that Jamaica's response has been suboptimal in terms of the needs of the economy. And this is why we have advocated for additional spending. I dealt with that very frontally in the press conference and we didn't skirt the issue at all. But it well, doesn't change the fundamental point that we made. Well, I don't entirely <laughs> agree with you. So for instance, um, you say you, you, you asked whether or not the IMF is going to stand by its data, for instance. The mm -hmm. finance minister said that he emailed the IDB, which emailed him back and apologized for omitting some of the figures he was mm -hmm. talking about. So it's sure. one thing to say you're looking at a, at a comparative situation, but it must be of concern if the opposition is relying on, on figures that aren't sound, on data that aren't sound. Yeah, but we have international development partners, right? who have access to the published information from the government. I challenge some of the data that he says should be included. For example, he says the expenditure on tablets and laptops should be included. I don't think so. That's a normal expenditure which our government has done. We started it in 2015 when we were in government. It's normally done through the Ministry of Technology. It wasn't done over the four and a half years because the government failed to deliver on that project. Now it is included as part of a COVID response. So I don't accept everything he has said must be included as part of a COVID response because what he seems to be doing is lumping all the expenditures and calling them COVID responses. And I don't accept all of them as being COVID responses. So that's the, one the, Yeah, but, but I'm saying even if you take his data and include it at face value without it being independently verified, it doesn't change the point we have made, which is that Jamaica's response to COVID as a percentage of GDP is one of the lowest in the Caribbean region. 
And that was the point of the chat, and that point still stands. Except it undermines your ability to make that point. For instance, let, let me let me let me ask the question this way: Why, for instance, you have access? You you guys you are the parliamentarians. You have access to the primary source of the data, which are the documents tabled in Parliament, the budget, and so on. Why are you even relying on the IDB to tell you how much money Jamaica is spending on a COVID response? No, the, the Why aren't you crunching no, your own data? Not, yeah, but the point the point wasn't about how much Jamaica has spent. The point is the, the regional comparison to see how Jamaica stacks up in the region. No, right? but what the, the finance minister is attacking you on is the figures you're using in terms of expenditure. So it's one thing to say, OK, we don't agree that X, Y or Z belongs in COVID expenditure. But even without that, he's questioning your use of figures. And my question is, why aren't you crunching the numbers yourself instead of relying no, on a secondary have... source of data from an international organization that itself is looking to the parliamentary data to, to, to put together its report? No, we, for example, when I looked at the data, we included monies, 8 billion that was spent in health. Which is why if you look in my presentation, my overall figure was 1.67. When we broke it down to the direct support for households and businesses, it was 1.27. From our perspective, as I said, the central argument that we made is that Jamaica's response has been low in comparison to our competitors, in the, to, to other countries in the region. And that stands, whether you include the data that the minister says should be included. And from my perspective, I would want that to be independently verified and not just take his word that all of these are COVID expenses. But you have the ability to do that. That's why I'm saying you have access to the primary source of data. I know, but it doesn't change the overall argument. If you add he, what he wants included, and let's say come, he said it should be doubled to 2.5%. Jamaica spent 2.5% of GDP responding to COVID. Jamaica would still be among the lowest in the region in terms of its response. And our argument has been that there's more that needs to be done by the government to respond to COVID in terms of the issues in the economy, the issues of the most vulnerable, the issues of um, small businesses. So nothing changes from our perspective, even if you add up those figures. Nearly out of time, but can you not see though, or, or do, how, how, do you not accept that it must affect the opposition credibility if the finance minister is systematically dismantling the, this, the, the data you're using, such as, for instance, the price of food that has gone up, um, which he said is not referencing the Consumer Affairs Commission well, data, In, in one case, in the Consumer Affairs Commission data, it is actually more than what I referenced. The others are lower. The point I was making around food insecurity and food poverty is that food prices over the five-year period have increased much faster than wage levels have increased and much faster than the inflation rate. So yes, there may be cases where I quoted higher figures. There are also cases where I quoted lower figures. For in the case of chicken back, the consumer affairs figure is higher than mine. It still doesn't negate the point that I've made about food poverty, which is that Jamaicans have experienced significant increases beyond what the wage rate increases have been. No, but for instance, throughout the press conference, on, on several points, you made this kind of point, the kind of point you're making now, saying, OK, well, our underlying argument is X, Y, and Z. So even if there is some difference in terms of the numbers, our underlying argument just still stands. Without acknowledging that it, the people people are, are at a loss as to whether to accept your underlying argument if they're not sure of the of the data you're well, using. I, I must tell you, the, 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 the feedback I've gotten, certainly the, the prices that I quoted are lower generally than the consumer affairs prices, both for 2016 and both for 2021. And the feedback that I've gotten, the prices are generally conservative to what people are paying out there. So, yes. I, so from my perspective, you, you're saying whether people have accepted it, by and large, people are saying they're paying significantly more than what we quoted those prices to be. Except it's not an issue of pulling random figures out of the air, though. It's a matter of, of using data from established sources. And again, you're saying, well, people said this and people said that. The finance minister is specifically referencing the, organi the government organization that I'm does not, come and that not data and share that data. And I'm not disputing the CSE's data, right? But neither am I negating the data that I got from um, one of the largest wholesalers in the country. And that information still remains valid. It is different from the CSE's data, and I accept that. And I would say that in the same way, there you are going to find differences in prices based on 
where a particular good is sold, whether it is at a particular location here or in a rural area, you're going to find price differences. It does not negate the point that food prices have increased faster than wage, wage rates have. It actually does if what you're doing is going out there and grabbing grabbing data from, as you said, one particular institution. That's the whole point of using centralized data, that you get aggregates, you get averages, you get an overall assessment of what's happening instead of cherry picking data to suit your, your and argument. I'm saying, even if you look at the CSE's own data, the CSE's own data shows that the price, the food prices generally have increased beyond the wage rates, which is the point we made linked to the issue of food poverty and the need for an intervention in that regard. And again, it doesn't negate the fact that there is a need for an intervention in that regard, which is the point we made originally and a point which we still stand by. Gonna have to leave it there, I'm out of time. Appreciate your time as always, Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Opposition spokesman on finance, Julian Robinson, talking to us there. Stay tuned, remember our hashtag TVJ All Angles and stay tuned after the break. We break down a little bit more of what we've been hearing from the various presenters in the budget debate.